Drop Baron Panda. Welcome to Drop Baron Panda. Save the world. Episode 52. 52. 52. That's like an entire year's worth of weekly podcasts that have been somewhat sporadic. <laughs> I think we've been pretty good, though. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> so, welcome. Here we are. Here we are. Yep. What's going on? Um, with The weather. It's our first nice day in what seems like years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, for an event, we went and bought a couple tents. An event in our backyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and we were afraid, actually, that we put up the tents and it wouldn't rain. Yeah. And it didn't for the longest time. But then towards the end of the event, it started raining. We were like, yes. Yeah, I have family in from out of town from southern Ontario. We have a, we have a small house. It's a, it's a lovely house, but it's a little small for 14 people. So we wanted to make sure that we had a barbecue outside. And we also had to find out some information about uh, our Ontario trip. Yes, exactly. So uh, Drop Bear here had the great idea to go get some tents at Canadian Tire mm-hmm. and not tent tents, but like. Yeah, like canopies. Yeah, exa- <clears throat> exactly. Canopies. And they worked out great. They paid for themselves because we didn't have 14 cramped people in our place. Yeah. And it did actually end up raining and hailed for a bit. That's right. Of course, now it's not going to rain ever again in Calgary and we will probably never use the canopies again. You're welcome, Calgary. Yep, yeah, you're very welcome. And uh, we might keep them up because I think I'll probably do a uh, an MDNA or a Drop Bear and Panda production uh, event this week. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds good. Stay tuned. Uh, the weather has been weird, though, because I think in eastern um, Canada, it's especially like in southern Ontario right now in Toronto, like I think plus it's 30 or something. Uh, well, with the humidity, they were saying that Toronto got up to 45 degrees Celsius. What? That's what they were thinking about. Yeah. Uh, with the humidity. So and <laughs> and then in Victoria here in western Canada, um, it was colder than northern Baffin Island. Yeah. Which is in the Arctic. So western Canada is suffering in a different way than eastern Canada yeah, is. It's, it's weird. How did we get into this mess? I really don't know how. We seem to be made to suffer. It's our lot in life. It's a yeah. weird time to be alive. Uh, but it's sunny now. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of nature. <laughs> what? Why'd you give me that look? Uh, speaking of nature. Yeah, why'd you give me that look? Because I'm wondering what you're up to. This isn't a part of our planned list today. Yeah. But I figure it's a, it's a good segue because you can only talk about weather so long. I don't know. Canadians can probably talk about weather. For, what? Yeah. So this is. Oh. All right. So so this and I'll put the link in the notes here. But this just came across my feed for National Geographic. One of the biggest great white sharks seen feasting on a sperm whale oh. in rare video footage. So I'm hoping that sperm whale is dead first. But we're about to find out. And Panda's got a thing about sharks. Well, the screen's small, so that's good. Yeah. She's one of the biggest ones ever filmed. Jesus. Yeah. That is one big fish. Oh, Deep Blue. This is the one that uh, um, that they filmed last year, too. Deep Blue hasn't started... She hasn't stopped growing yet? No, they don't. They never stop growing. Never stop, never stop stopping? Never stop, never stop growing. Yeah, anyway. A girthy belly? Is she pregnant? Oh, no. Oh, Oh, no. More sharks. Megalodon. (laughs) Now with more sharks. Where's Jason Statham when you need him? Maybe she's just fat because she was eating on the sperm whale. Maybe. Oh, this is... I'm... This isn't as exciting. The the music is ridiculous. Du, 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 du. This isn't scary. No. Okay. Anyway, I think we actually talked about this thing last year. Well, this is July 19th, 2019. Yeah, a few days ago. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm All not... Right. Okay, well, that was fun. Yeah. See, look what happens when you try to improvise... I <laughs> fail. I <laughs> fail so hard. Well, mm. I've seen scarier shark videos by accident, though, pop up on my newsfeed. Yeah. I thought that I thought I was going to be able to terrify you a little. 
well, you did for a second. Mm-hmm. I was like, what do you mean? What, 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 what? The nice thing is too, is since it was on that, um, little tiny screen popped up on the big screen, it wasn't that scary cause it was a little tiny screen. Yeah. So one thing I love about our Apple stuff is I can just throw stuff up on that screen. It's true. Yeah. Well, while I chastise you, oh, yeah. why don't we listen to a word for our sponsors? Sounds good. Time for another Drop Baron Panda Friday Suck Company collaboration. Oh, good sir. Bacon and eggs, polka dots and stripes, ethical Canadian socks are oh, nice. Bangers and mash, cricket and blimps. Drop Baron Panda are the fresh sock pips. Podcast jingles, chap hops the illest. Pith helmet locked and trousers are the twillest. Friday Sock Company, Her Majesty's finest. No field toes seem needle caps the highest. I will be requiring an additional microphone. Oh, indeed, sir. This one's been damaged by gravitational pull. Oh, I see. From dropping it, sir. Well played, sir. Well played. So yesterday was the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. I love the Apollo 11 moon landing. Why? Because it creates controversy. Controversy. <laughs> okay, Google, what was the Apollo 11 moon landing? According to Wikipedia, Apollo 11 was the spaceflight that first landed humans on the moon. Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module pilot Buzz Aldrin formed the American crew that landed the Apollo Lunar Module Eagle on July 20th, 1969 at 2017 Coordinated Universal Time. Google is so handy. I know. She's so, super handy. Su- yeah, super handy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, so the... and. So the eagle has landed. Mm-hmm. That little. So the, the reason why I like it is because there's always controversy around it. There's some people who are just like that was totally fake, and there's other people just like wasn't totally fake. It was like real. They've talked about it being fake since day one, though, right? Yeah. Is it what did they talk about it being fake because nobody could believe that it could be done, or was it the Russians, or did the Americans try to make it? sound like it was fake to make more people watch it like why i don't know but it's it's one of those it's one of those things and if you think about i I know that we've sent uh or like china sent probes around the moon i'm sure we do that all the time yeah and we we talked about um months ago about they were trying to grow yeah seeds on the moon which didn't really work that well which is good to know as well i'm just a mean green mother from out of space and i'm there's been no other manned missions to the moon which does make you wonder especially with our because it was fake so with our technology today because apparently like our phones have got more computing power than nasa had in that one room that calculated all the stuff so i just i love it because it's it's controversial and you do wonder it's probably because there's no oil up there. <laughs> we found no oil, so... But, if, uh, <laughs> but, but there's there's freedom. Let's not go up there. Let's go get the freedom. Well, what was what was the um, Apollo 13? Yeah. Uh, okay, Google, what's Apollo 13? According to Wikipedia, Apollo 13 was the seventh crewed mission in the Apollo space program and the third intended to land on the moon. So Apollo 12 was supposed to land on the moon as well? Okay, Google, what's Apollo 12? On the website C.edu, they say Apollo 12, the second manned mission to land on the moon, was planned and executed as a precision landing. Do you want a little more context? Yes. The astronauts landed the lunar module within walking distance of the Surveyor 3 spacecraft, which had landed on the moon in April of 1967. Oh. But they never got out, I guess. So we keep we kept trying to get people on the moon, but Apollo 13... That's the failed one, miserably. That's the one that like almost they had to use the moon slingshot to slingshot them back. Yeah, that was that movie with Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah. It's actually a really quite a good movie. Yeah, it really was. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch. Failure is not an option. And did they just stop trying? Because uh, we've tried to we we shot other people into space, but. We haven't sent them to the moon yeah, since. No. Is that correct? Yeah. As, as far as I know. Like, yeah. Certainly they haven't made a big deal about it. Oh, okay, Google. How many people have walked on the moon? 12 people have walked on the moon. 
Four of them are still living as of July 2019. Twelve people. That's much, many more than I thought. I was thinking like four. Yeah. Twelve. But I don't, we don't know their names. We know Buzz Aldrin. Well, why don't you ask Google again? <laughs> hey, Google, who are all the people who have walked on the moon? People who have walked on the moon mentioned on Wikipedia, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Charles Duke, and others. <laughs> all the other people aren't important. <laughs> Charles huh. Duke. Wikipedia always <clears throat> makes me a little weary because I could probably put my name up there if you I... You totally can. Pan <laughs> Panda has walked on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. See, you learn stuff here on That's Drop right. Bear and Panda. Yeah. And uh, and, and I was almost uh, could see it on TV. Through your mother's navel. <laughs> Doink. Watch your mom call in. Uh, and be like, no, nothing. You no, know, you couldn't. I, you owe me some socks. That's you not how my not mom see sounds. Through my navel. <laughs> I know it's not, but again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> now she's gonna call in for yeah. saying something. You know, That's we right. really need to do a drop bear's mom call in, oh. or a drop bear's parents. We were talking about yeah, that. And, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so definitely have to do that. Uh, yeah, but I need to figure out the tech for that. Well, the te or 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 just call call in later and then add it in. But we yeah. need to have more drop bear stories. Oh my gosh! I mean, when you're in utero, it doesn't really work. But it's like I was in space along with them. But not. Uh. <laughs> so that's a thing that we talked about. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh, Speaking of space Yeah, so Area 51, hey Yeah We talked about that last week Yeah, we but did it, there's the story is developing The story has <laughs> developed a little bit Because um, so, You're going to find the news? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it right here yeah. um, So not only are local hotels uh, now getting overbooked As this Area 51 gains traction Which we do have uh, an article on that that we will share yeah which means that people are actually talking either people are going to be there or they want to or they want to see the show. other people <laughs> going on a road trip huh yeah on a tour of america's most famous ufo hotspots i hear that i cannot believe we're gonna see area 51 uh, maybe it'll just turn into a rave that would be fun um, the gentleman who created this Facebook event page uh, has made himself known. Uh -huh. His name is Maddie Roberts, uh, and he created the Facebook event page Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us, which is what we talked about last week. Oh um, telling people online, we will all meet up at Area 51 Alien Center tourist attraction and coordinate our entry. We can move faster than their bullets. <laughs> Let's go see them aliens. Right. He actually told uh, KLAS TV in Las Vegas he never planned on invading the Nevada area base. <laughs> He's probably in so much shit right uh, now. Oh, yeah. Well, he said, I tried to make it seem as much of a joke as I possibly could, but there are definitely some people taking it seriously. Oh, my God. <laughs> so he's... Uh, Whoops. Yeah, he is very aware that it's a military base. Yeah. And I think he's like, oh, shit. He you probably know. got visited by some men in black. <laughs> Once it got past 500,000 people that were interested or were going, I was like, the FBI is going to show up at my house. And it got a little spooky from there. <laughs> Sorry, after it hit 500,000, that's when he thought it was going to be. I would shit my pants if it like got more than 100. I'd be like, oh, God. Like, you know, you have a couple people who are like your friends. It's You're like, like this ha, is funny. Ha. My own friends. Like, I have friends who have put like interested who are going. And I'm pretty sure they're not. Yeah. But, uh. you know, some people are question marks. You never quite know. I'm not going to call them out on my podcast, but you know who you are. <laughs> Love you guys. Unreal. But yeah, it was never supposed to be serious, but who the hell knows? Yeah. You know what's going to happen is it's going to turn into like a yearly rave. Oh, sure. In September or like something in, like in that. In Nevada desert. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then I think I saw a, a, a meme or something like that or from Reddit or something where it says like it's going to turn into this yearly rave and then the aliens are actually going to show up and no one's going to know because everyone's going to be dressed up <laughs> right. with like these dealy boppers on their head. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. They're going to be dressed up as aliens and the aliens are going to actually come and infiltrate and no one's going to know because yeah. everyone's going to be dressed up as aliens but and it's going to be a yearly thing. What was the guy's name? 
Matt Roberts. Matt Roberts. Matt Roberts point... is probably working with the aliens. And what? Yeah. To free their brethren. Controversy. Send their bodies back into space, the ones that didn't make it. Yeah. I think there's 1.7 million people right now. Jesus. So, yeah, as of when this <laughs> article was made um, a few days ago, the page just currently boasts 1.7 million people who are going and another 1.3 million who are interested. Good Lord. And last week it was like 68,000. No, it was over. It was over half a million last week for sure. Was it half a million? Yeah. Si- oh, yeah. 680,000. Yeah. Yep. Good God. So. <clears throat> well. Hope you all like dying because yeah. it's a military base. Ooh, speaking of space. Oh. Nice. You're like a. what? Uh, what's the. Oh. Okay, Google, what's the name of the instrument that does the Star Trek theme? Theremin. The theremin-like sound theme was actually provided by renowned studio soprano Luli Jean Norman. Anyway, yeah, uh, so Picard. 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 P- so uh, you just, uh, we got a trailer for, yep. for Picard. I just showed you that today. And uh, it, and we didn't know it's an Amazon video. I thought it was like a go to the Cineplex Odeon to go watch it, yeah. but it's Amazon Prime. Yep, yeah, Amazon Prime. Who knew? And uh, it looks pretty good. Yep. I, I'm definitely going to watch it. Make it so. I have not watched any of the next gen movies, I don't think. Yeah. How many next gen movies are there? Four. This would be the fourth. Huh. Third. Three. People can correct oh. us or we can ask. This is like the OK Google, Google episode. episode. OK, Google. How many Star Trek movies are there? Fourteen. Star Trek includes Star Trek, the motion picture, Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan, Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock, and other films. I don't really know how to ask her how many involved. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Uh, okay, Google, how many Star Trek films are from the next generation? Here is some information from the web that might possibly help. Seven television series make up the bulk of the Star Trek franchise. Star Trek, the original series, the animated series, the next generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, and Discovery. That is not what you asked at all. No, it's not helpful. Helpful. But that's cool. We'll figure it out. But anyway, there's been some, uh, I don't think I've watched, because that's one with Wesley Crusher, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's next gen. Yeah, and I haven't watched all the TV shows either, but I did watch The Next Generation. My dad used to watch it. Yeah. Um, I preferred the later ones than the earlier ones. Yeah. Um, I kind of, I liked them all, but I don't know that they'd hold up for me. Cause they don't. <laughs> they don't, they don't hold up for you? No, when, when we got cable uh, in our new house here, I think I was downstairs or like, you were, ha- you were having meetings upstairs and I was like, I'll just go downstairs and watch some TV or something like that to kill the next hour. And the next gen was on. It's like one of those channels that has like 12 episodes of the next generation. Oh, and so you're like, oh, I'll just watch one. Yeah. And I was like, my God, this is not very good. Oh, not as good as I remember. Yeah. And I remember not loving the next generation cause I'm not a huge Trekkie nerd, but, yeah. um, cause I always found that because it takes place in the future in space, you could just make a lot of shit up. Yeah. Like the battles were always like, press these buttons and, oh, wait, we can reroute the photon right. X-ray super duper and it'll go around this thing and it'll vaporize the other stuff and move this star 30 degrees to the left. And totally all of a sudden <laughs> we've set time back 60 minutes and saved the world. And you're yeah. like... You know, Scotty is always telling me we're always out of dilithium crystals. What the hell is he doing with them? Is he selling them to the Klingons or what? Bill out. That's how you ended the... Okay. You know? Yeah. I don't know. It's the future. The photon x-ray super duper. You know what I'm still waiting for? That was the worst. (laughs) Yeah. I'm waiting for uh, Tribbles. I think Gene Roddenberry had like a lot of things that have come true. Uh, except for Tribbles. Yeah. I do recall a Tribble episode. Was it Deep Space Nine? Oh, really? They, they had a, a crossover <laughs> episode where they went back in time and they ended up on the original Enterprise. Oh, my God. And they were in the 
a cupboard <laughs> where the door opened and they threw these tribbles out. And on the other side was the old Kirk going like, oh, these tribbles. And oh it, they, it was it was actually probably the best scene from. That's amazing. Uh, a Star Trek episode I've ever seen. Yeah. But yeah, tribbles would be great, but yeah. terrible. Yeah. It's like the gophers, not the gophers, the squirrels in our backyard. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what else that I would like in movie world? What? A uh, female black James Bond. Oh, yeah. Talk about controversy. <laughs> controversy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm very confused with this. Well, I'm I'm confused, too, because they say that uh, she's going to be like uh, she's not going to be new James Bond, but she's going to be 007. And isn't I thought it was the same thing. I thought it was the same thing, too, because I, I know that. But maybe they recycle it. I don't know how many double O's there are, like, because double O 103 would be weird. Like, is there how many, <laughs> how many double O's are there? I assume there would be nine. I would think so, too. OK, Google, how many double O's are there in the James Bond universe? Sorry, I don't understand. Yeah, mm-hmm. nobody does. Yeah, I might That's just cool. I might just look that one up. But maybe yeah. there isn't an answer, though, because you can't double O 10, double O 10. Yeah. I, th- I figured there was nine. But if she's not the new James Bond, it means that the James Bond isn't a code word for 007. Right. I guess, which was a rumor. The 007 was his code word. And that's why he would go around saying his act- his name. Because if you're a spy, you don't want to say that your name is James Bond. But if your name is a code word, then that would... If it's your fake name, then you could say you're James Bond, right? I guess. I have some I have some information that just came up. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is from uh, Wikipedia as well. Uh, but so the the double O section of MI6 is considered the Secret Service's elite. Double uh, O is denied. Uh, blah, 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 is a failed agent that holds a license to kill. Yeah, right. That's double O. Um, List of double O's, so 002, there's 004. Um, oh, so 002 was mentioned in The Living Daylights. 004, also The Living Daylights. 006, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. 007, of course, James Bond. 008, is a guy named Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that Bill. Uh, and that's in, from Goldfinger. I love gold. The look of it, the taste of it, the smell of it, the texture. I love gold so much that I even lost my genitalia in an unfortunate smelting accident. Hence the name, Gold Member. Uh, 009, uh, oh, uh, first referred to in Thunderball, Thunderball, then Octopussy, then Spectre. And 0011 is Cedric. Cedric. Mentioned in the novel Moonraker. Uh, and then there's. I just had a vision of Cedric the Entertainer being <laughs> double, right? double 011. That's amazing. I want that to happen. Yeah. Then there's I like. Wish. So a bunch of people have done Bond stories. So not Ian Fleming, but other Bond type stories. And okay. There's, there's 001, 004, 005, 006, 007, okay. 010, 012. So. Okay. Um, so that says to me that it's not a recycled thing. So it's, you know, if James Bond dies, they're not going to recycle 007. 007 is James Bond. So if this woman is going to be James Bond, or 007, pardon me, then she's the new Bond. But the articles we have say that I she's know. not going to be I know. James Bond. I know. She's the new 007. Which is James Bond. This is the, the and I think that the. Why would they say it then? Because I, I think probably somebody got it wrong. Or it's just the. Um, I don't know what what production house is doing this this one, but it's it's a great way to get people talking about it. Yeah, or like in the movie, they're trying to like uh, screw up the bad guy, so she's going to pretend she's double O seven, but yeah. but James Bond is gonna hide in the shadows. Maybe so Daniel Craig gets a sex change and a pigment and augmentation a dye job. Like <laughs> no, because when I, when I found out that she was going to be the new James Bond and the new 007 mm-hmm. and or I actually got a little verklempt. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, I'm 
the kind of person who doesn't give a shit. I, I, I'm not a complete purist. Yeah. It's a fictional character. Right. I don't care. Yeah. Or if they were like, we're going to do a whole new bunch of kind of James Bondy films, but we're going to have her as a 005. True. Don't care. Like, cool. Like, I don't give a shit if there's a black fucking Ariel mermaid. Don't care. That's yeah. awesome. Yay. Mm-hmm. You know, like women of color and women and, you know, I want to see I greater see. representation. Cool. Awesome. I want, have at her. But I want her to be Jane Bond. I want her to be Bond. Jane Bond. And uh, that would satisfy me. Yeah. Like, who fucking cares? Yeah. Don't give a and shit. She can have sex with all the people. Cause, yeah. Because that's what Hell double yeah. O's do. Well, I saw I saw a comment where there somebody said something like, and again this was off at like screenshot off of Twitter and it it said something like, somebody said that well if it's a female then she can't have sex with all these women and someone's like, uh, can't she? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure she still can. <laughs> yeah. So I I mean I was really excited so so it, a leak came out saying that she was the new 007. So either somebody got it wrong. It's not actually what we think it is. Yeah. Um, I will go see the movie though. Yeah, I'll, I'll still go see it. it. Or they're just creating controversy that's not there. <laughs> or they just gave away an ending that's yeah. not really a. Because te- usually when they have a new James Bond, it's just a new movie. Yeah. They don't pass the torch in a movie. Uh, yeah. I still think Ildr- Ildris Elba would be amazing. Oh my god, I would love to see that. Actually, I want Ildris Elba to be the new Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. Speaking of non-white people, oh, being superheroes. Oh my god, Simu, Simu. <laughs> so right out of Kim's convenience and right into the Marvel universe. Um. Oh my god, love it. So yeah. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be epic. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So, uh Simu Liu, uh he is a Chinese Canadian actor who is in Kim's Convenience. Uh has been set to star in Marvel Studios Shang-Chi playing the titular character. Mm. And I know nothing about this yeah, Marvel character this at universe. all. I know nothing. I'm not a superhero. I'm pretty blah. I'm super pumped that super pumped get it get it get it wow <laughs> i don't know i thought you maybe did that on purpose but no i'm super pumped that a uh, we need more canadians as marvel superheroes but on the flip side b i'm so tired of marvel superhero movies i know i'm, I'm so excited but at the same time i'm like oh yeah i'm hoping that we're not on like the down low um, the downward slide. The downward slide. Um, Dark Phoenix came out, and I want to say that's... I have even heard of that one. Yeah, I want to say it's part of the Marvel Universe, and it bombed horribly. And it could have just been a bad movie, but uh, check that. the redhead from um, Game of Thrones was in it, and uh, I don't know whether it was just a bad movie or people just didn't want to go see it, but uh, huh. it was only out for a very short period of time. Um. um What's well, about the X Men? Yeah, is it that's not Marvel? It is from Marvel Entertainment. Yeah, um, but I, I honestly never heard about that movie at all. Yeah, like oh, it was, and it was released June seventh. Yeah, this year. Yeah. Holy, huh? Yep. Yeah. It made two hundred forty-five million in the box office, and it was uh, it cost two hundred million to make, so not really successful. I mean, didn't lose money. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but didn't yeah. make a bunch. No. Huh. So the only the only thing that I'm worried about is, uh, you know, when when a, a movie like this or a comic like this comes out in the 70s, um, they uh, uh, how how much they're going to have to change it to not be super offensive <laughs> for right. 2019 or 2020. Um, this article does say Marvel does not have the rights to Fu Manchu. A, pl- a problematic character that has roots in xenophobic yellow peril tropes. Wow. Uh, so I think they're going to have to do some uh, 
some reworking of that. Huh. But um, well, they'll figure it out. I'm I'm really excited. Uh, Lou was born in China and immigrated to Canada when he was five, and yeah. he grew up in uh, the Toronto suburb of Mississauga. And uh, he's been a bunch of you know, uh, sh- you know, films and TV yeah. shows in in Canada, and yeah. hit Kim's Convenience, and super nice guy. Uh, yeah, and shredded. Oh yeah, that and dude is built like a freaking superhero. Couldn't be more excited for Canada for yeah. that as well. Like such a nice guy. How many Canadians do we have playing superheroes right now? So it'll be Simu. Yeah. As uh, Shang Chi. Uh huh. We've got. Um, what's his name? Ryan Reynolds Ryan is playing Reynolds Deadpool. Is Deadpool. <clears throat> Do we have any others? Is it just two? I think it's just two. Huh. That I know of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you know different. Call in. Send us a thing. Send Win us some, some things. Maybe you'll get some socks out of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, speaking of amazing movies coming up. This is a movie episode. This is the Google movie <laughs> extravaganza episode. <laughs> uh, Kingsman. Oh my gosh. That, the King's Man. Yeah. Wow. I lost my shit when I saw that. Yeah, this is incredible. Like, God, that looks good. It is the prequel to The Kingsman. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed The Kingsman. Yeah. Took me a while to enjoy it, only because the main character's hat Eggsy. was stupid. And his name is <laughs> Eggsy, which is also stupid. Wow. I, see, and I, I loved everything about the first one. But there was not one thing I didn't love. His hat. His <laughs> hat was stupid. I, but anyways, but the movie was great. Yeah. The second one, I... It was forgettable. I thought it ruined... Which one was the second one? I remember? They were like, drugs are bad, but alcohol's okay. Oh, remember it was yeah. weird and, and Elton John was in it? It was oh, just very... Yeah. It was just weird. I, oh, and she like... Don't bother watching it. What was the name of the actress in that? Um... Um, and Julianne robot. Moore, right? Ch- Channing Tatum, Halle Berry. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a weird one. It was not. It was terrible. I don't, I don't know. That it was terrible. It just wasn't good. Yeah, it was, I was very disappointed. It was. But the King's Man looks freaking outstanding. Oh my god! World War One was like. It, basically, it shows where the Kingsmen came from, yeah. and the it just I my head exploded everywhere. Yeah. There's bits of my brain all over the back wall. And it's all Skittles. All Skittles everywhere, just everywhere. I am so excited, and yeah, I and really these movies have a way with their their fight scenes and their choreography, oh, and and I mean it could all be computers. I have no idea, but oh my gosh, it just looks so sweet. And Rasputin's in it. Right? Like like just I oh yeah. okay. So that that's on the must see in I'm the already my list. brain is melting right now. So we're gonna have a link to the preview. Yeah, because um, you're gonna want to see that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I will forgive the second one. Just don't bother watching the second one. <laughs> Watch the prequel and then Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Um last week, uh, we we're gonna look into the mustard seed to see how we can locally help homeless people. Yes. <clears throat> and uh so what we what we've discovered is that you can donate stuff, like you can donate money and uh time. Um and we'll put a link to the website. So some of the things like you can do one-offs and that's fine. uh, If you are a recovering alcoholic, you have to be clean for a year before you can volunteer at the muster seed, which is interesting. Um, If you are doing community service, like you, you got a fine or you got arrested for something and you need to do community service, you can actually do your community service hours at the mustard seed, or you can just volunteer and help out. Uh, you do have to go through um, like a, a criminal record check and stuff like that, uh, but you can do it. It's kind of cool. Your shifts can be, I mean, they have four, different. Four sh- hours, I think, is your minimum. Uh, average volunteer shift is two to three hours. Um, you will know the exact beginning and end time of your shift a couple of days beforehand. Um, I mean, you know, and and you can't just show up and volunteer. Basically, no, you, you gotta, have to. You have to go through the process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll put a link to that. Yeah. If anybody well, local is listening and is interested, that's how you can do it. Yeah, and maybe you can volunteer at the same time as Drop Bear because Drop yeah. Bear is like, oh, I want to do a soup kitchen, or you can make sandwiches, pancakes. 
you know, pancakes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But uh, we'll have a link, but you can also call 403 269 1319. There you go. Or email volunteer at the seed.ca. What? Bam. Nice. Uh, How are you going to save the world this week? Whoa. I was going to, what? Huh, fine. Do you know how you're going to save the world? Yeah, I'm going to give all the empties in our kitchen. I've already bagged them and staged them. I will put them in the back. (laughs) Man. (laughs) Yeah. Well, so we have. Really, I think that's how we're going to save the world. We have have the, um, the, my brain just went. It's because I just blew it. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we do, we do a lot of recycling on this show. Which is kind of cool. We I'm sure looking do. for a new and improved way to save the world. You know what else you could do? What? Make more get out of jail free cards. Oh, yeah. Totally. We- yes. All right. Yes. That's how I'm going to save the world. So we went to another podcaster's wedding reception this past week. Mm. Callum. You were looking at you. Callum and Krista. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, and our gifty to them, mm-hmm. uh, we made uh, two get out of jail free cards. That's right. <laughs> For when you fuck up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <coughs> we were trying to think of a, a, a cool and neat gift that wasn't the usual. Yeah. For Krista, we gave a if you fuck up. Yeah. And for Callum, we gave him a when <laughs> you <laughs> <Yeah>. fuck up. <laughs> And uh, Drop Bear had these printed off, and it's a get out of jail free card yep. for uh, and uh, attach some cashola to it to only cash yep. to get into the other person's good graces again. That's right. Yeah, take them out on a date when you when you when you fuck it up. Yeah, or flowers, or uh, chocolate, or yep. uh, a little road trip somewhere mm-hmm. or something. So, so we're gonna make those available online. We're not going to include the cash. You got to look after your own cash. But you you can buy a you can buy a booklet of get out of jail free cards for him or for her, or for those who identify others. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. Yeah, I think so. And they were really well made. Like kudos to your print shop. Yeah, Print Three Downtown Calgary. Those guys kick ass. Oh my god. And I really liked how the back um, of the actual card, not the back of the card, but yeah. the, the background of the card. If you hit it at a certain angle, it says, "What was it? You it, fucked it was up." Like ha ha ha, you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. <laughs> you fucked up. So good. Yeah, oh in my this god. in this gloss varnish that you can only see when the light hits it a certain way. Such a good. Yeah. Such a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I think we come up with some pretty good ideas. Yeah. Anyway, so you can uh, you'll can you be able to hit our website this week and buy uh, buy buy these things. Yeah. <laughs> well, there it is. We're saving relationships one card at a time. Right. Yeah. Oh, you you saved my butt that time. I sure did. Yeah. Nice. I saved your world. Whoa. Yeah. I'm going to give you a pair of socks. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I've been Panda. I've been Drop Bear. Okay, Google, say goodbye, y'all. Goodbye. <sighs> cool. Huge thanks to our sponsor, the Friday Sock Company. This podcast was recorded at the Drop Bear and Panda Kensington Studio. Special thanks to Emery Courts for the kick ass theme music. Yo. Don't forget to subscribe. Drop Bear and Panda, ya. Yeah. Drop it, panda.